Hey guys, it's me, producer Ross, and welcome back to another edition of my ITFC. And today I'm joined by another Ross, and it is uh, Ross Wishart. How are you doing, my friend? Yeah, really well, Ross. Thank you very much. Good here. And um, how how's been? How's lockdown been for yourself? Um, you know, going back to some normality now, but still a lot of things going on. But how you been doing? Yeah, it's um, it's still a a bit of a surreal experience, no matter how long we've been in it. Really, um, I. I've got a bit of a difficult situation domestically, so I've been um, I've, I've very rarely left my home for the last six months. So I've only recently, within the last couple of weeks, returned to my actual office. I've been working from home um, throughout all of the the pandemic thus far. So um, yeah, and we still have to be super cautious in terms of what we what we go and where we do, and what we meet, and things like that. So it's um, yeah, still a still an odd world out there i think there's a lot of uh, anxiety and, and trepidation but um hopefully there is light at the end of that tunnel i mean i'm not from Ipswich originally although i was brought down here at a very young age um so and, and i've always been football mad as a, as a child now i was my father he was actually because we've come down from scotland he was a big hibernian fan um but i was actually well, you know, my cousin very much tried to jump into me to support Rangers. But obviously, when you're living down here, I always found it difficult to, to support, you know, a club so far afield. I didn't necessarily have that connection. So um, it's, uh, you know, I, I went to a few Ipswich games and you, know, you just kind of you fall in love. When you go to your first game, you, you walk out into these grand arenas and there's tens of thousands of people and the atmosphere, when that first catches you, um, there's really there's no feeling like it. So uh, you know, Ipswich was my first game, and you know, it's the love affair from there. This is um, can you remember your first town game? Um, I can. Well, I, there's a couple really. My first town game. I'm feeling if I still have the program. Here. Oh wow! So uh, so this was the Barclays League Division Two versus Millwall on Saturday, the 19th of October, 1991. So that would be. That would have been two days before my ninth birthday. Um, so there's the program for that. Uh, so my dad took me to that for my birthday. Here's the scarf um, that he purchased for me on that day. So, you know, we are talking oh, virtually nine years ago now. Yeah. I somehow seem to recall actually going to a game perhaps just before that, which would have been a reserve game against um, Spurs. But, I mean, yeah, that was my first properly because it was a proper league match. So I... I Consider the Millwall game my, my first proper game. This, um, I'm sure there's a few favourite town players during your time. Have you got a few yourself? Yeah, there's there's always quite a few. I, in my playing side of things, I've always been a fullback and I've played football since I was a child as well. Um, so I've always had a connection with the likes of Mauricio Tirico. Is yeah. is an absolute star um, for me. And so, and, you know, left back as, as I play left back. So, yeah, he's, he's very much, um, you know, a personal favourite of mine. And then also, you know, look, look back at others. You know, Catan have had some really great, you know, quite famous fullbacks, you know, the likes of you know, Fabian Wilness um, as well. As, and I've actually had the, the honour of playing alongside Fabian, for, you know, uh, during a charity game. And that's to, to just receive a pass of someone that you idolised and, and paid to watch, you know, for my road is, uh, that, that's a tremendous feeling. You probably got this answer an awful lot, but George Burley, in terms of what he's, mm. in, in my time anyway, what he was able to achieve with the club and, you know, to get them promoted and to take them to fifth in the Premier League. Now, everyone waxes lyrical about, you know, what Chris Wilder's done with Sheffield United, and rightly so. Um, but I don't think that George Burley really got the recognition from the wider footballing community that he deserved for what he did with Ipswich Town at that time. Um, that, you know, it was phenomenal to take that team to fifth in the Premier League into Europe. Uh, that's an incredible achievement. And, and to do it playing football the way Town did. Um, so, yeah, absolutely. He has to be right up there. And actually, I really enjoyed the Joe Royal period as well because, you know, it was. It was potentially a little bit tougher behind the scenes for him, but he was still able to to really get this 
Ipswich philosophy and got the team playing, playing really, really well. Um, there's been a few quite memorable matches, but one that, that always comes to mind is Town at Home to Sheffield United, 2003. Mm. So, um, Pablo got sent off early in the first half. Um, then Sheffield United took the lead, and then they went 2 0 up just after half time. So, you're 2 0 down, you're into the second half, uh, and you're down to 10 men. And yet, Town turn it around and win. Um, and the, the winning goal in the 88th minute, just the place erupted. I erupted. The whole play, it just that was absolutely phenomenal. And I can't even, um, I think I was um, fairly well oiled by that point, but I can't even necessarily recall the match itself. I mean, to, to go 2 0 down and down to 10 men, it couldn't have necessarily been the greatest game from a technical point of view but just the feeling and to to be there for to experience that that you know always comes to my mind I think for me that and there's not a lot better to see a, a, a really clean strike and to something to come off the woodwork and then in that that's quite obviously you always boil down the question when you do like goal of the season things like that what what makes goal of the season? Is it just the strike alone or is it the whole build-up play and then the team goal? But actually, I have to give a nod here to Cole Skews. Now, okay. he probably won't, you know, when you ask about goals scored, he's probably not a name that will really come to mind. But actually, his strike against um, Cardiff in 2015, mm -hmm. you know, because he doesn't score many, but the way he hit that ball, it just came to him and he hit it. And he was, what, 22, 23 yards out. He struck it really sweetly. It went in off the post. And it was Colescu scoring a goal. So actually, I, that's, that's a great strike. Yeah. I like the, um, some people then had shirts, didn't they? So I was there when Colescu scored. Because it's been, it was like a hundred or something appearances for town without scoring, and like he's finally scored, and it was an absolute cracker, as you mentioned. So, the yeah. Twitter profile has Cole Skew scored yet, and things yeah. like that. You know, it's and it's not his game. Okay, yeah. he, he is a defensive centre midfielder. You know, and he's he's that kind of linchpin or that kind of that line of defence. Um, so he's not there to score goals. Obviously, as a centre midfielder, you'd like to try and see him get involved a little bit more. But he does his game and his job really quite well. Um, and, you know, he's, he's... I will refrain from using the term legend, but you know, he, he's becoming, you know, part of the Ipswich Town fabric for, obviously, a lot of people argue for, for better or for worse. But, it, you know, we have an affiliation to Cole Skews and, and his goal and for him to do to do that amongst his other work is I think is quite special. I, I mean th this season's I think is is really quite special. Um, I, I, maybe I'd like it if the collar was a little bit narrower. I'm quite picky about these sort of things, but it's to, to have the, the yellow badge is a really great nod back to obviously the UEFA Cup days, um, but. I, having said that, I've actually got a bit of a soft spot for the white sleeves. You know, to, it's, historically, Ipswich between the 30s and 60s always had white sleeves on their kit. So I'm, I've got, I really quite like 94, 95, the white sleeves, Bison's as a sponsor. It had, I mean, it had like a, a ridiculously big shirt style collar with the red string i like quite like the little hint of of red we get in some of our kits um so yeah actually for me and then it obviously invokes a lot of memories in terms of you know really quite great days classic days and some and some classic legendary Ipswich players as well playing in that strip so uh yeah that's uh that's up there for me as, as one of my favorite kits Um, now, this question could be as a town supporter, but also can be as a general football fan because, you know, sometimes as fans, we just go to different games. Like, unfortunately, as town fans, we probably won't be going to a new camp anytime soon. Um, so for yourself as a town supporter, what's your favourite away ground to visit? But you can also have a nod for another, any, any other grounds you've gone to as a, a football fan. 
Well, I'm, I'm glad you said that, actually. I'll come on to that in a moment. I'm, unfortunately, I've not um, been able to go to attend too many away town fixtures. Um, I was, I was, I went to Anfield for the second round of the League Cup 2003, I think it was. Uh, so that was an evening game. And this is a way to a Liverpool side who the season before won the UEFA Cup. And then, with two, and then this is just two years prior to them going on to win the Champions League. So a cup game at Anfield in an evening under the spotlights. Um, I think we went on to we finished one one, and we lost on is that we lost on penalties. Um, but to be at Anfield in an evening game, that was that was quite special because that's that's quite a place um, to go and watch football. But yeah, I will give a nod to. Um, the Stadio Alto Forestai, which is FC Union Berlin's ground. Oh wow! <laughs> now I went there. It was a few years ago now, and they were they were they're in the Bundesliga now, but they were in the second tier of the Bundesliga before. Um, and I went there for it was just a fairly mid-table clash. There was not a lot of meaning to it. It was a league game um, against Ingolstadt. It finished one-one. There's just 16,000 people there, and bar one side, the entire ground is all standing. And, and you can stand there, and you can have a beer, and to go to the game cost me 11 euros. <laughs> and the football wasn't necessarily anything special, but it was a spectacle to go there as a fan. The atmosphere, they just they sang relentlessly. Even though we, they went 1-0 down, the volume actually increased, and they sang more. And they carried on, and it just built and built and built until Union went on to score the equaliser. And actually, that's really quite an experience. And, and I would recommend anyone to to go and you know experience that. Not necessarily FC Union Berlin, but you know German football as a whole. They're incredibly passionate, um, and that that's quite an experience. Yeah, the worst the worst part about being a town fan. Or, or the most painful memories. Funnily enough, just before that Berlin game, obviously it must have been a few years ago now, because that was that was the weekend after the the night of when Ipswich came, uh, when Norwich came and beat us five one, um, and obviously Portman Rovers packed. It was an evening game. I was sat just a few rows away from the Norwich fans, and then to sit there and to watch that unfold. And they just took us apart to be getting absolute pelters from that lot just next to me, yeah. singing their ridiculous pop songs was unbelievably painful. Um, really quite depressing. Yeah. It was. And then another painful experience, and I guess, you know, death by a thousand cuts was two years ago, was the relegation season because the eternal optimist in me was always of the belief, not always, but a lot of the time of the belief that we could still survive. You know, if we just, I appreciate we were getting a bit more cut adrift, but, you know, if we, like any championship team, you get a few wins together, you put a run together, you know, momentum's a great thing. And then actually, you know, we could still get out of this. Um, and then just as the games went on and the defeats and the shocking performances, it was just the dawning of what was about to happen was just you know really quite painful and it was the, the when relegations actually confirmed we all we already knew by that point you know yeah. it was coming but but prior to that and the, just the, the slow capitulation and, and death was um yeah was was horrendous everyone will say Wembley 2000 Mm -hmm. I know I hop back to my my stash of nostalgia moments. So here's the program um, from the from the playoff game. Here's my ticket from the playoff game. I've even got my ticket for the coach travel for the playoff game. That's Love it. that's how much of a hoarder I am. Yeah. Um, the old Wembley to see it cut into blue and red, and to be at that game. Um, and the game itself was. Unbelievable as well. It absolutely ebbed and ebbed and flowed. That was 
just a truly magical moment. And then, but then the day as a whole, it wasn't just the game, it was the it's going to Portland, the getting on the coaches, the travel down there, um, the match, the way that unfolded, the getting back on the coach and coming then back to town. And then I hopped in my car and I shot into the town centre where it was still absolutely going mental. Um, my, my, my pal who lived just up the road from me, he came with me and we're joining the throngs of people throughout the town with the flags and the bibbon and the horns and just watching a, a transit van with about a dozen people kind of hanging out the doors and windows, tear around the roundabout where Blockbuster Video used to be, just <laughs> these type of memories from that entire day and that whole feeling um, is just, yeah, absolutely incredible, monumental. But then there's a few others as well, like um, I was at John Walk's testimonial and I actually, um, my father won tickets for that um, through some, where are we now? I've even got, um, oh, fun out, yes, speaking of the playoff final, I've been, my stash over you know, your old paper. Yeah, yeah. The special victory edition that they did here. Yeah. Yeah. And then um, and then Johnny Walk's testimonial uh, that we went to. And we actually we won tickets. We went out in the players' lounge after that. And I was I was you know, still quite young by that point. Um, to then to be in the players' lounge surrounded by you know idols at the time just was a, a really incredible feeling program your special evening star program for that all signed by you know the whole team as well okay. which which i'm sure might be worth a bob or two in some time but me being of the age then um i've gone and done the inexcusable thing of then writing every player's names next to their autographs i know who it is so that's probably completely taken any value off that um playing in a charity football game and just receiving a pass from fabian wellness that for me just felt you know really special as well at the time and um yeah there are this love affair with Ipswich Town as painful as it is there are these moments which are just exquisite um and no one can take them away from you and um well Long may those days <laughs> return yeah. at some point. It's the hope that kills you. You know, it's um, we were overly optimistic last season, probably. I'm guilty of that as well. Um, same again this season. You know, there's probably no excuse why this squad of players, you know, I appreciate that the recruitment, recruitment hasn't necessarily been blown us away. But when you look at the squad as a whole, why we can't go on to easily get out of this division. So, yes, I, you know, I'm i looking for more moments to add to my yes. ridiculous hoard of historic memorabilia um, and hope that if we do another video, maybe in a few years time, we can actually talk about great moments that are not 20, 30, and then 40 years ago. So um, yeah, come on town. Well, Ross, it's been a pleasure. It's been great to hear all your memories. Um, thank you very much for getting involved. No, I appreciate it, Ross. Thank you very much. Cheers for inviting me.